This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Yesterday, we reported that the Chinese-made cars sold by Buick and Lincoln in the U.S. would be hit by 100% tariffs. But it turns out that the tariffs only apply to electric cars. So Buick and Lincoln will not be affected. Where the tariffs will have an immediate effect is with batteries and battery parts for electric cars that are imported from China. The tariffs on those batteries and parts were at 7.5%. Now the Biden administration is raising them to 25%, and that will have an immediate impact on companies that are importing them from China. For example, certain versions of the Mustang Mach-E and F-150 Lightning use LFP batteries made by CATL in China. The 25% tariff could wipe out the low-cost advantage of LFP batteries from China. Even though that 100% tariff only applies to electric Chinese cars, the Biden administration is working on another way to prevent any Chinese car companies from getting into the American market. Gina Raimondo, the U.S. Secretary of Commerce, will propose rules later this year that could ban connected cars sold by Chinese automakers. She says it's all about national security. Connected cars collect data on people and infrastructure everywhere they go, and that could be beamed back to China. Every new car today is connected, so banning Chinese cars on a national security basis could make it harder for China to get the World Trade Organization to rule against it. Uh, This is certainly turning out to be the year of the hybrid in the U.S. market, and not just there. Data from S&P Global shows that sales of hybrids and PHEVs shot up 48% in the first quarter, while sales of BEVs were only up 5%. And hybrids and PHEVs easily outsold BEVs, 413,000 to 264,000. And you know, we're seeing the same thing in the European market. Hybrids up 20%, electrics only 3%. And right on cue with that info, the Volkswagen Group announced it's going to back way off its EV or bus strategy, and it's going to put more investment into hybrids. One reason is that Germany and Sweden have cut back the subsidies they offered to consumers to buy electrics, and that had an immediate impact on sales. Meanwhile, Honda is going in the opposite direction. While Japanese automakers have been criticized for dragging their feet on transitioning to electric vehicles, Honda says it's going to invest $64 billion in EVs through the end of the decade. That's about $6.4 billion a year because they're counting from 2020 to 2030. But you know, even though they're going to spend $6.4 billion a year, Honda's already spending $6.2 billion a year on R&D. So it's really not increasing its investment that much. However, it will likely slash development of ICE products and put that money into electrics. Honda's strategy is to reduce BEV production costs by 30%, cut battery costs in North America by 20%, and make its EV supply chain more vertically integrated. It's going to launch seven of its Zero Series EVs globally by 2030, with the first of them launching in North America in 2026. By 2030, Honda's aiming for EVs and fuel cells to account for 40% of its global sales and have them represent 100% by 2040. When the elements are working against you, being confident in your grip on the road is what really matters. Bridgestone Alenza tires, improved acceleration in wet conditions. The Tesla Cybertruck is already outselling Rivian's electric pickup truck two to one. According to S&P Mobility, the Cybertruck had 1,158 new registrations in March in the U.S., compared to just 548 for the Rivian R1T pickup. But the Ford F-150 Lightning beat both of them with 2,893 registrations, which is nearly triple the amount from the year before. Speaking of Tesla, only a small number of owners decided to buy full self-driving after a free one-month trial, 
and after Tesla slashed the price to $8,000, or only $99 a month. According to Yipit data, out of the nearly 3,500 owners who participated in that free one-month trial, only 50 of them bought or subscribed to FSD. That's only a 2% take rate. However, Elon Musk disputed that number and says that take rate is much higher, but he didn't say what the number is. Mitsubishi doesn't sell a lot of cars in the U.S. Last year it only sold 87,000, and that's with three vehicles in its lineup, but things are starting to pick up. First quarter sales shot up nearly 36%, and it's going to add another model to its lineup, a sporty passenger van. And hopefully it's going to look a lot like this DX, a six-seater PHEV concept van that it unveiled last year in Japan, but the van will not be on sale until late in this decade. Chinese automaker Neo officially launched its new low-cost brand called Anvo. Meet its first model, a mid-size crossover called the L60, which is aimed directly at the Tesla Model Y. It features a 900-volt architecture and has an energy consumption of 12.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which is just a little bit lower than the Model Y. It has three battery pack options, 60, 90, and 150 kilowatt hours, which provide ranges from 345 miles to 621 miles, but that's based on the, the pretty easy Chinese test cycle. Like NEO's other models, the L60 also features swappable batteries. It's available to order now and has a starting price of only $30,500, which is 12% cheaper than a Model Y. Deliveries of the L60 begin in the third quarter this year. You know, when Stellantis announced it's going to start selling electric cars made by Leap Motors in China, it sent shockwaves through the industry. Even though Mercedes and Volkswagen are cooperating with Chinese automakers, Stella is going farther than that. It's going to use cars made by Leap Motors to fill out its lineup. We might see electric Fiats, Peugeots, and Opals that were either made by Leap Motors or which are based on their platforms. And that's got to have other automakers wondering if they should team up with Chinese automakers to get access to low-cost EV technology. And this is a trend we're going to have to watch closely. Hey, be sure to join us for AutoLine After Hours today. We're going to have Mike Ramsey from Gartner Research and Joe White from Reuters. Some of the topics we're going to get into include what the heck is going on with autonomous vehicles and what's going to be the impact of those Biden tariffs on Chinese cars and how far is the UAW going to be able to go to organize the transplants. Anyway, that brings us to the end of today's report. Sean's going to be back in this chair here tomorrow, and it's been a real pleasure for me to fill in while he was away. Over and out. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering boost your game. Tajan Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility, and by ZF. Intrepid's NeoVi Pi, allowing automotive engineers to interface, capture, and monitor vehicle data using Raspberry Pi. As a matter of fact, it's the automotive industry's first robust platform for Raspberry Pi, featuring Intrepid CanFD technology and Raspberry Pi compute module. The NeoVi Pi is designed for automotive environments allowing use with relative power ranges and applications. In addition, the NeoVi Pi enables you to use the Raspberry Pi 4 compute while avoiding additional development to adapt to network environments. That makes the NeoVi Pi powerful enough to solve your vehicle network problems, yet small enough to fit in your backpack. One of many intrepid tools used for developing zonal architecture and software defined vehicles. There's nothing wrong with heavy metal. Hey, lighten up. But with world-class composite material, Tajin Automotive Technologies makes vehicles lighter, safer, and more eco-friendly.